Afternoon. Howdy. Selling your honey kind of cheap, aren't you? Well, it ain't exactly a busy road. <laughs> yeah, that's true enough. Well, I guess I'll take a couple quarts. Listen, why don't you try my special blend? You never had anything like this before. Sure. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Pretty good. All right. What's to get up for? <laughs> Just these bees, you know, sometimes they're ornery. and kids they'll be looked after oh yes all the details been tended to now, for all intents and purposes you're going to be the victim of an unfortunate car crash my hands the cave achieved what other men only dream of. From now on, you are Bob Tucker. The blood my bees didn't inject into you has been carried to the hive. It's being turned into a very special honey. From now on, a weekly pick-me-up will maintain your transformation. Just a taste of honey to give you immortality. <laughs> Mr. Purdy! Mr. Purdy? I'm, I'm Mickey Foster from Curious Goods. I wrote you a letter two weeks ago. I didn't get no letter. You are Dwayne Purdy. 
It's my brother. He ain't got no need for what you're selling. Oh, listen, I'm not trying to sell anything. In fact, I'd like to buy something. Mr. Purdy, your brother bought a turn-of-the-century transport hive from Vondrady's Antiques? Beehive. Well, yeah, it kind of looks like a glass case. Look, if, if you could just tell me when your brother's coming back and I'll... He ain't coming back. He's dead. Dead? So all this stuff and there ain't no hive. You best get off my land. We're gonna move on. Safe around here come nightfall. I'm sorry, Mr. Hendricks. I have bad news. We had hoped to contain the tumor with the chemo, but... How long have I got, Evelyn? Six months, maybe a year. There are special things we can try, but in my opinion, they'll just drag things out. Would you like me to come with you when you talk to Joanne? No, I'll do it. Everyone's time comes someday. I wish it wasn't true, but it is. Six months, maybe a year. Would you like me to come with you and talk to Joanne? No. No, I'll do it. Jack, it was really weird. Almost as though he barricaded himself in, and he wasn't telling me anything. All right, Ryan will get Dwayne's death certificate from the coroner's office. Well, do you think I should see whether or not there are any other bee farms around here, apiaries? Eh, well, yeah, I guess it's worth a try. Call me back this afternoon, Mickey, and we'll compare notes, hmm? Okay. All right, bye-bye. Dead end? Maybe not. Knowing how Dwayne Purdy died may give us an idea how the hive operates. At least that'll be something. What's so special about this one? You've been through your library ten times. Well, it's special because it's a rare piece. It's one of a kind. Besides, I haven't a clue what the thing does. Mr. Moore wants you right away. Oh, well, I'll just hang up my jacket. He said right away. Hmm. Yeah. Bobby, I want you to sell it. Yeah, just dump it. And get back to me about that investment meeting. All right, Mr. Martin. How long have you been with us? Norm? Oh, oh, uh, 30 years, uh, sir. I started selling combines and tractors. Yeah, we're phasing that out. I had bigger things in mind when I bought this company. I'm not gonna beat around the bush. We just don't need your talents anymore. And I'm letting you go at the end of the week. What? I I'm eligible for pension in just... Uh... I revised the pension plan. Tied it to productivity. In your case, it's not worth waiting around for. P please, Mr. Meyer, uh, my wife and I... The decision's made. Please close the door when you leave. Coroner's report says he has so many bee stings they couldn't even count them. When did this happen? Right after he bought the hive from Lewis. What, so whoever has it has been using it for more than a year. Well, that's just it. There's been no other stinging death since. None. Oh. No, look, I checked everything. Every other death around Crawford Corners has been normal. Either natural causes, uh, farming accidents, nothing. No bees. Well, then what's this all about? Why kill Dwayne Purdy and nobody else? Oh. Look, if Mickey calls, tell her to sit tight. I'm going to borrow Rashid's car, and we're going up there in the morning. Jack, what for? There's nothing going on. Whoever had that hive, it, it can't be there anymore. Dwayne Purdy was our only lead, Ryan. I want to make sure. You just don't need your talents anymore. We had hoped to contain the tumor with the chemo, but 
I'm letting you go at the end of the week. Six months, maybe a year. Hey! Wait a minute, wait! No, no, don't hit me. My wallet's in my jacket pocket. <laughs> don't hit me. Norm, relax. How do you know my name? It's me. Ed. Ben Landis. Get out of here. Ben was killed three weeks ago in a crash. No, the only minute it looked that way. A, a couple of months ago, you told me you were sick. Cancer, right? They were starting chemotherapy. You were worried about losing your hair? Who are you? I told you, it's me, Ben. My wife, Martha, the kids, Angeline, Robbie. Uh, how's Joanne, Jojo? Your wedding, remember your wedding? I was your best man. I had to lend you my ring when you forgot yours. Ben? How long you got? Six months. It doesn't have to be that way. You can start over again like I did. I've got a place in the country. I've got a young wife. Norm, I got a second chance of life. Look, there's, there's this guy. He can help you. Come on, what do you got to lose? You're not crazy, Norm. It really is me. Just got a new body. I'll get one for you, too. Oh, now you saw your friend Ben. I can do the same thing for you. My wife. If I uh, sign my insurance over to you... I'll see that she's taken care of. I'd like to be sure. Mr. Hendricks, once you're transformed, you must never see your wife again. It's better that way. Are you sure this will work? Ben's never been happier. Farm life seems to suit him. Not that it's right for you. You sell farm equipment. Why don't I see if I can't come up with something in sales, huh? <laughs> my personal favorite thing I've ever done in my whole life is torturing an animal. Well, I'm glad it went so well with the doctor today. Joanne, if something does happen to me... No. No, we are not going to be negative about this. We have to be realistic. At my age... Norm, you and I are growing old together. Now you retire, and we're going to use your pension to do all the things that we never had a chance to do before. Jojo. And I won't have it any other way, you understand? It's all right, Jojo. Basement garage, please. Well, I've been going so hard, I haven't had time for lunch. Care for some? It's mighty good. Hey, sorry about that. What do you think? No, I, I got something for it. Take care of that. Ah. Yeah, these little guys will take good care of that. Welcome, Mr. Hendricks. I'm all ready for you. You just go on into the barn. I'll be right in. See you, Norm. I need something else from you, Bob. I need to close out the file on Norm's present life. So what do you want from me? 
a body to substitute for him. You want me to kill someone? Unless you know a better way. I can't do that. I'd hate to keep your uh, taste of honey from you. Looks to me like you're going to be needing some soon. I'm changing back. We need to help one another here, now don't we? going far, but you're more than welcome. Thanks. Appreciate the run out of gas about a mile back. Oh, God. Oh, my God. You've got a new life, Mr. Hendricks. Fred Mars' life. You've ever wanted. I can't believe it. We know Dwayne was stung to death. We have to find that high before it kills anybody else. You got any sense, Sonny? You'll keep away from the damn thing. What do you mean? What happens when those bees sting people? They die. That's what happens. If you don't know what else it does, maybe you shouldn't be looking for it. Mr. Purdy, please. Get out of here, boy. <laughs> Bad things happen to folks who talk about that hive. It's gonna happen to me. Look, if you're frightened of something, you can tell us. We'll help you. Only help us staying inside, keeping the windows shut. If you want them to come for me, they'll come. Now get out of here before he sends him for you. Who? Who's he? Yeah, farmers got to be up in the latest technology these days to earn a profit, uh, Mr. Marshak. Wouldn't do for me to be uh, using an old-fashioned hive now, would it? Well, I'd still like you to give me a call if you happen to find out anything. Well, sure. But I don't know any beekeepers around here be interested in buying any antiques, uh, unless you're looking to sell this thing. <laughs> well, if you do happen to cross it, give me a call. Hmm. You, you got to help me. I need that honey. Sure, sure thing, Bob. Uh, your order's all boxed up. Nice meeting you, Mr. Marshak. What the 
the hell do you think you're playing at? Look what's happening to me. I need that honey. Why don't you just go blab it all over the couch? Look, I did what you said, now just give it to me. I gave you this body and I can take it away just as easily. Now, you ever put my operation in danger, you'll wish you died a hundred deaths, understand? I got a good mind to let you dry up right here. No, no please. I promise. I won't say anything, I promise. And don't think you can just help yourself. You so much as breathe on those jars, I'll know it. We've got one old guy terrified of bees, another one desperate for honey. I don't get the connection, Jack. You well, know, this man wasn't just old. He was, uh, I don't know, prematurely old. You know how some older people, they, they've got a body that, that looks lived in, used? Well, his wasn't. He was like a younger man with just the trappings of age. But what does that Wait mean? Wait a second. I, I remember something in school about um, Egyptians who believed that honey could restore you? Yes, of course. There were lots of cultures who believed that honey had this power to rejuvenate. Even our own health food stores sell bee pollen and uh, royal jelly as energy foods and so forth. So the hive keeps people young? Well, it could. I don't know. I just don't know how it works yet. I'm going to take Rashid's car, go back to the store and do some checking. What should we do? Take another look at McCabe's farm. He's the key to this whole thing, I'm sure. Hello? Mrs. Hendricks? This is Fred Marr. Your husband used to work for me? Yes, I know that. I just wanted to say how deeply sorry I am. Mr. Morrow, I'm afraid I can't talk to you right now. Well, if there's anything I can do, you know, anything at all. Well, thank you. And uh, if there is anything, I will call. What do you suppose this thing's for? I don't know. Whatever it is, it's not the hive. Ryan, I found a storage room full of honey. I'm gonna grab some. Why don't you go check out the loft?
You like bees, son? I'm sure these bees will like you. Mickey! Get out of here! What? Come on! Fortunate. If they'd overwhelmed you, your bodies had been drained of blood. Look at this. They have bees full of blood. Vampire bees? It's not the only strange thing about them. What else? Well, most bees die when they sting. But none of these died until you killed them. What are you saying? That these bees use blood to make honey? I can't really be sure until I check the sample that you got, but I'd say it's a distinct possibility. Eating the honey keeps bodies of people young. It could be. I still think there's a piece of the puzzle missing. All right, like why haven't we heard about any bee-related deaths? Well, we know where it is. Let's just go get it. No, no, no. Wait, Ryan. If McCabe knows we're after him, then he'll have hidden it by now. Well, we can't just leave it there. We're not going to. First thing tomorrow, we go and see Mr. Purdy again. This time, he's going to tell us something. Hello? Mr. Marr. Joe? Mrs. Hendricks? Look, I'm sorry to bother you. What's wrong? I got this letter from the company today about Norman's pension. Now, he worked for them for 30 years, and uh, he's hardly got anything. I'm sure there's been some kind of mistake. I'll look into it. Oh, thank you. I, I really wouldn't bother you, only... Well, the insurance company says that he changed his beneficiary. I, I don't know how I'm going to pay for... Mrs. Hendricks, please. I'll have this cleared up right away. I, I don't want to put you to any trouble. It's no trouble. Not at all. This gentleman said he had an appointment. Yes, he does. I'm sorry I forgot to tell you. Where have you been? I've been calling you all night. I need to see my wife. I thought I told you. You can never go home again. That's none of your business. <laughs> Mr. Marr, your whole life is my business. What life? It's not supposed to be like this. I'm supposed to be happy. <laughs> I gave you what you wanted. Whether you're happy or not is not my concern. What are you here for? To collect your debt. What debt? The cost of eternal youth. Did you think you were going to get all this with a Tiny insurance policy. What do you want? Well, I'm always in need of bodies. Like the one I got to replace you. What do you mean? I mean I want you to kill someone. You can't make me. You will do whatever I want. You think I put you into this job so you can have a fancy office? You are my road to the future. Why me? Your uh, contacts will lead me to people who 
are willing to pay far more for my services. Bank presidents, corporate giants, politicians. And you will get those leads from me. Because without me, you die. I see you've started already. You can't run away, Mr. Barr. There's no place to hide. I've seen clients who resisted me die. It isn't very pretty. Now, I've had three visitors from this antique shop. I want them all dead. Why? <laughs> because you won't get your taste of honey until you kill them. What the hell's wrong with you people? Why can't you leave me alone? Because we need to find that beehive, Mr. Purdy. He'll kill me if I talk. Who? McCabe? We need to know exactly how he uses it. That's how we can find out where it's hidden. Do you want to spend the rest of your life locked away in that shack, shaking with fear that the swarm's going to get you someday? You can't fight that hive. Those bees come straight from hell. McCabe's the one controlling them. You want him to kill more people like he killed Dwayne? I can't help you. Why not? Because... Tell us! Because he's my brother! First he stole the hive from Dwayne. Then he stole his body. The bees drank Dwayne's blood and then transferred it to McCabe. He'll send those bees to kill anybody who stands in his way. But there have been no deaths from bee stings. Oh, there's plenty. He rolls them under tractors. He burns them in barns. Nobody knows the truth. Wait a second. I read in a newspaper about a man who was mangled by a combine not far from here. Do you think that could be... It? Just say a lie. Or get out of here. You can't fight a thing like this. Maybe not. You can't run away from it, either. Mrs. Hendricks? Norman and I only worked together for a short time. But what I remember most is how much he loved you. Now he's gone, I realize how much I appreciated him and how much the company has lost. I'm really going to miss him. Is that why you fired him? What? You don't have to hide it, Mr. Marr. Norma didn't tell me, but I knew that job was his life. And I knew you'd finally taken it from him. Mrs. Hendricks. He was just an old man to you. Someone who didn't measure up. <laughs> Don't cry. I think you're going to have to go, Mr. Moore. Please. Well, if there's anything you need, anything at all, just call.
I've got to talk to you. Then let's talk. Is it done? No, I can't. I'm not a killer. Anyone can kill, if they have a good enough reason. There isn't one. No? How about this? Oh, Joe. Let her go. Not until you do what you're told. Mr. Marr? Is that you? <laughs> there are a number of things I could do to her. Drain her dry. Or turn her old and ugly. You bastard! It's an interesting dilemma. Tell somebody and they think you're crazy. Refuse me. You both die. I'll see you upstairs. Now get going! What's he doing in there? It's almost midnight. Jack, look. I wonder who that is. Come on, let's get this thing over with. Be careful. back to the car. He's in a transfer of body as well. He needs the honey as much as everybody else. Force him to take us to the hive. Here. Put this in the car. I'll be finished with the other box by the time you get back. my bees. What are you doing back here? You are right. I do have to kill somebody. Don't be stupid. If I die, you die. I'm already dead. I'm thinking! This way. Yeah, come on. Yeah. <laughs> come on. No use 
to him? Norman? Oh, God! Norman! Jack, do you think it's a good idea to let those bees go? Well, we smoked them out, sent them onto another hive. Where? Are you sure that's safe? I think so, Ryan. It was the hive that made them into vampires. Without that, they're harmless. Just as McCabe was harmless until he got his hands on it. I wonder if we'll ever know how many people he transformed. If only Mr. Purdy had done something earlier. Well, it's been said, hasn't it, that uh, the only thing that's needed for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. And some, like Purdy, hide from evil. Some like McCabe's clients, well, they ignore it. It doesn't harm them. And some like Norman Hendricks fight back. It's nice to know we're not alone. <laughs>